introduction. And all the introduction consists of is just two relevant definitions to your question. If they're asking about economic growth, then give one definition on short-run economic growth and give a definition on long-run economic growth. Okay, just two definitions, that's it. You don't have time to waffle. So introduction, just two definitions. Boom. And then moving on to your body. Body, body. I mean, what is an essay without a body, my friends? That would be a bit creepy. So in your body, um, not like in your body as in like literally your body, but your essay's body, we would have two or three paragraphs, i.e. two or three main points. Boom, boom, boom. And for each paragraph, we would come up with a point and then we're going to develop it from there. So from each paragraph, we'll use the peel structure, P-E-E-E-L. Okay, and we'll talk about that later, but for each paragraph, okay, this looks really disgusting, but oh well. Yeah, for each paragraph, each point we make, we're going to use the peel structure. Okay, we'll talk about that later. And then, what is an essay without a conclusion, my friend? Conclusion. And in your conclusion, you don't repeat what you just wrote for your body. Rather, you want to give a brief overview and then you want to assess, for example, which one is the strongest argument. Okay, so you don't want to repeat what you said, but you're evaluating all of the points you just wrote. So to me, conclusion is like a very large evaluation. When you're evaluating in your pure framework, you're only evaluating your mini point over here. But conclusion is like a massive evaluation. You're evaluating all of the points. You're assessing which one is more important, which one contributes the most, or which one is the strongest argument. You're evaluating all of these points, whereas your mini evaluation is only evaluating one of the points. Now let's get into the pure framework. So what exactly is the peel framework? Peel framework is peel, 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 peel. So the peel framework is super, super simple, but super, super useful. So first of all, you will make your point. Very brief, brief to the point. Oh, the camera just fell. For example, if we're talking about the benefits of economic growth, then the first point might be that an increase in economic growth will lead to a rise in living standard. That's it. That's your point. Brief to the point. So, so, so brief. If you don't explain it, then people are going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, what the fuck? So therefore, you got to explain it, my friends. You got to explain it. So therefore, your next step is explanation. And what do you do in explanation? You develop your chains of analysis. And you can also include a cheeky diagram. Because you want to use the diagram to supplement your chains of analysis. You know, in economics exam, these examiners, they're looking for depth of analysis. You need to show them that you can develop chains of analysis, chains of reasoning, and you have to stop making assertions. So you want to show them that you have got the depth of analysis that you're a deep thinker. The way to achieve depth of analysis is by giving them chains of analysis, chains of reasoning. You want to develop as many steps as possible. Instead of just saying, well, economic growth is going to improve living standard. How? How is it going to improve living standard? You're going to give as many steps as possible. So you gotta give them a very detailed explanation. Just treat these examiners as if they're super, super dumb, super, super silly, because maybe they are very silly. Um, actually, that's a bit too rude. So my point is an increase in economic growth is going to lead to an increase in living standard. Now I want to explain it, and I need to give them chains of analysis. First step, and I think my handwriting is so ugly, so sorry, friends. An increase in economic growth it's going to lead to, step one, an increase in real GDP per capita. And then your next step is that an increase in our GDP per capita is going to lead to higher incomes. And therefore, people, they can afford to buy more goods and services. So they will buy more goods and services. That's going to lead to an increase in consumption, yeah? and an increase in aggregate demand. Now you can actually draw a cheeky diagram to explain what you're saying. So you've got your AD and you've got your AS and here you've got your price level and here you've got RGDP. And because of an increase in consumption, that's gonna shift the AD to the right. Am I right? Therefore, real GDP just rose again, my friends. Real GDP just rose again from here 
to here because of an increase in AD. That might lead to even more employment. You know, if there are more demand for goods and services, firms, they are more willing to hire more workers. There will be an increase in employment. And therefore, what do we see? We see a multiplier effect, don't we? Yeah, so because of this beautiful multiplier effect, what does that mean, guys? Multiplier effect. Then there will be an increase in aggregate demand again and blah, blah, blah. And therefore, you're going to see higher incomes again and people can buy more goods and services again. And therefore, basically, the point I'm trying to say is that assuming that buying more goods and services will lead to higher living standard because, you know, if you can buy more stuff for yourself, won't that lead to a better life? Um, maybe. Therefore, at the end, we reached a point where we say that, therefore, there is an increase in living standard. Boom. That is our chains of analysis. Maybe you can just stop over here if you're short of time. Just say that you've got higher incomes and therefore higher incomes lead to people being able to buy more goods and services. Therefore, assuming that will lead to a higher living standard, then that's your point explained fully in steps. Boom, 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 boom. But if you have time, then just add in a bit more with multipliers and stuff to show them that, oh my gosh, you know all this stuff. And it really kind of boost your answer. Anyway, so you've got your point, your explanation, which is chains of analysis and a cheeky diagram and learn how to explain the diagrams because you can't just gain marks by just drawing a diagram there. Like, boom, that's it. You're not going to gain marks, are you? Um, unless you draw them in a very beautiful way. Um, so yes, you need to know how to explain your diagram as well. So here you need to say that because of an increase in consumption and because consumption is a huge component of aggregate demand, it's going to shift the AD to the right. You need to actually physically write them down to describe your diagram. Otherwise, there's literally no point of drawing a diagram. Anyway, we move on to our next E. So what is this E? Evidence or example. Basically, you're trying to use an evidence or example to support your explanation. And that is by wider reading, uh, watching the news, reading the news, and just note down some interesting examples that you can use in your essays, then just note them down. In that way, that will really boost your essay by showing them that you can apply them to real life. So that's also very important. And also, if you can't think of any examples, so if you've got a data response question and you're stuck with examples, then just pick an example from the data, from the article they give you, or use that as your example. A little tip right there. Whether it's from the extract that they give you or whether it's from your own knowledge, use it here to support your explanation. And then the fourth one, the next E, it's gonna be evaluation. Evaluation is key in your 25 marker. What is a 25 marker without some evaluation? When it comes to economics evaluation, so like, I, I don't have any evaluative comments. Hmm, well, no, 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 no. Evaluation is actually very, very simple. You just need to be very pedantic and be really annoying and be very critical of what you just wrote. So for example, you might say, in the short run, this is very beneficial. But, 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 but. In the long run, mm, not really. Like, no, it's very, very bad. You'll be like, actually, actually, there are many other factors that might contribute to this. Or you can say, to what extent is this true? Hmm? Hmm? To what extent? Or you can say, actually, this is a very strong argument because blah, blah, blah. Or you can say, actually, this is a very weak argument because blah, 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 blah. Or you can say, um, actually, in different circumstances, it varies. Or you might say, or you might say, or you might say, in different regions, in different countries, it might have different effects. So for example, if you said that economic growth it will lead to households seeing their incomes rise and therefore they can buy more goods and services and that can lead to higher living standards, then for a evaluative comment, you say, no, no, no. Is this economic growth sustainable? Are the benefits evenly distributed? If the economic benefits are appropriated to the most well-off in society, mm. then average households, they will not see a rise in their living standards. You know, so all these evaluative comments, you just need to boom, 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 boom. You know, you just want to develop your answer and give a fuller picture for the main body of your essay. Get on with me. Also, guys, you need to remember to alert the examiners that you're making chains of analysis by using connective phrases because your examiners, after marking tens of thousands 
Okay, and probably not that many papers. They need somebody to alert them, you know, make it very clear that you're making chains of analysis. So connected phrases include like if something something, then as a result, in turn, it leads to you need to allow to your examiners that you are making chains of analysis. Be like, wake up, my friends. I am making chains of analysis, okay? So give me good marks. When you're giving an evidence or example, write for example next to it. So allow to your examiners that you're making an example because literally your examiners are marking thousands of papers. They might not pay full attention to what you're writing. So you need to alert them. So write for example, for instance. And um, likewise, you know, before you evaluate something, write phrases to allow to your examiners that you are evaluating. So you need to write, however, on the other hand, this is a weak argument because it depends. You need to alert your examiners that you are evaluating. And the final appeal, what does that last L stand for? Well, the last L stands for linking back to the question. Got to link it back to the question to show clear relevance to the question. Okay, so that's kind of a very brief summary of the points you just made. Show that what you just wrote is highly relevant to the question they are asking. So you need to start this by saying, hence, or therefore, it's just a small mini conclusion for your paragraph. There you go, that's one paragraph done. Pew, pew, pew. Okay, guys, so it's very simple. That's a paragraph done. Using the peel framework, you've got your point. Boom, a very brief to the point point. Okay, an increase in economic growth leads to an increase in living standard. That's your point. And then you explain it. You explain your little brief point using very extensive chains of analysis. And then you include a cheeky diagram to explain your chains of analysis, to supplement it. And also you need to remember to explain your diagram. Describe what you're doing in your diagram. And also when you're writing your chains of analysis, don't forget to use connective phrases to alert your examiners that you are making chains of analysis. And then you include an evidence or example. If it's a data response question, maybe it's from the context that they gave you or maybe it's using your own knowledge, whatever, you use an example to support your explanation. And then you evaluate it, you evaluate your point. And lastly, you link everything back to the question. How is it relevant to the question the examiners are asking you? So there you go, your beautiful peel, peel, peel paragraph, done. So let's just go back to our economics essay. We've got our introduction, which is two relevant definitions. That's it, okay? There's no time to waffle and write beautiful, beautiful introductions, no. Because in your economics exam, time is money, my friends. Time is money. And then you move on to your body, your absolutely beautiful body. And in your body, you want to include two or three main points. And for each point you make, you want to use the pure framework within that. So you've got your three large paragraphs, very, very large paragraphs and then for each paragraph you want to use the peel framework okay for each paragraph you make your point and then you use the peel framework to develop that paragraph peel, peel, peel. and then lastly you've got your conclusion my friends so you know that in your body you're evaluating your point and that's kind of like a mini evaluation whereas conclusion is like a massive evaluation of everything you just wrote okay whereas this is just evaluating a mini point in your conclusion you're evaluating every single point. You're assessing all of the stuff you just wrote. You want to summarize your three main arguments very, very briefly. And most importantly is you want to make a final judgment, assess and evaluate and make the final judgment. Maybe you can say it actually depends on different situations or this is definitely the strongest point because blah, blah, blah. You want to make a final judgment. You need to assess again evaluate again but this time you're making a big evaluation whereas here it's a mini evaluation of a single point you said whereas here you're evaluating all of the points you just said okay so that's it guys that's your guide to a perfect 25 marker during your economics exam literally i use this all the time hello guys i'm back again um and this lighting is very interesting because it literally makes me look even more yellow look at this beautiful lighting <laughs> <laughs> this beautiful lamp. Um, anyway, yeah, don't forget to give this video a cheeky cheeky like. Oh. Oh. And don't forget to give this video a cheeky like, um, comment and subscribe and I'll be back if you guys do that. Otherwise, just bye. Hope you guys found it useful and uh, bye. <laughs>
for more videos like this. Mm -hmm.